Hey, this is the first video I'm going to do. Got a buddy that has a Bobcat S650. Went to Bobcat. They gave him an ungodly price to put carrier seals in it. So far, I've gotten the inch and a half bolt out of the big sprocket. trying to figure out how to pull the axle back to get the sprocket out. Got to do the same thing on the back side. I've got to get all three of these plates, the big plates, off. I've already had the one in the middle off. The carrier seals in this piece here and this piece here the seals in it are leaking hydraulic oil right into the chain case 11 gallons overnight without it running it was coming out of the vent hole here and I pressure washed everything and got it all cleaned up but I'll be back with more hey y'all I'm back I got these three covers off I gotta get them two bolts out of there to loosen up the chains to pull the sprockets through that side when I pull the carrier and the hydraulic motor off. I apologize to everybody. I didn't decide to do this video until after I had all this stuff off. The foot lever controls and the joysticks. If you skip to the end of the video, I'll show you how to put it all back together. It's Hey guys, I'm back. Been a few days, been freezing cold and pouring rain. Pulling the axles out of this thing. Two eight ton bottle jacks. Screw it out, you push against the back side of the axle. Pops the axle right out. You've got to get the bolts off the chain first. I'm going to do this side first. Again, for those who missed the first video, the seals in this thing are bad. So all the hydraulic oil is going from the hoses into the chain case and filling up the chain case full of oil until it starts to come out of this vent hole. Got the axle pressed out. <clears throat> Got the two hoses with the split flange pulled off the motor. I gotta get this hose off and then I gotta pull all the big Allens out and take the hydraulic drive motor off. Once I get that off there, I'll be to that carrier and there's four bolts, six bolts on the inside that hold that on. You know, if you guys like this video, get some better camera equipment so I can actually film myself doing this stuff. I'm doing it with my phone right now. Um, but we're getting there, slowly but surely. Only the big bolts, the two little bolts, Hold the pump together. And there's the part I need to put seals in. Alright, I'll be back again. Alright, y'all. I got the six bolts out of the back side of the carrier. If you're going to attempt this, I'm assuming you have big boy tools. It took a, uh, a one inch torque wrench that I have that's about five feet long and I actually had to make something because I wasn't about to buy a three-quarter inch breaker bar so I just welded this thing together made something to hold the three-quarter or the three-quarter drive 15 16 those bolts ain't no joke they were pretty hard to pull out I had to get this bottom bolt there from in this back hole pulling on it with a wrench leverage it was not fun all the other the top four i got with that that's a one inch torque wrench with the one inch drive 15 16 deep <clears throat> it's a it's a monster and then that's where the carrier bolts do so you get them six bolts out You end up with this. You've got to work the chains off the top of the sprockets. 
and that's where your brake disc is going to go if you have the serial number with the brake disc. Oh, and it is not light. But on to pressing this. I already took the snap ring that goes here. I took that off already. I got to press this out with the bearing. I've got this tool. work that I'm going to pull it out of there with just to push it through the bearing but that was a OTC 522 I think it, I, if I remember right it was like 80 bucks but I got the, the long shaft and everything that goes with it okay y'all had to go buy a little press from Northern Tool to push this thing out that little tool that I had the other day did not work there's the carrier seal that I need to change so that is where I'm at then we'll put this side back together and start on the other side yay I don't know how many parts of this video I'm gonna have to edit together but I didn't have the blue Loctite, and mine here in the shop went bad, so I'm going to have to get some from work tomorrow. Uh, I almost got the other carrier almost all the way out. Uh, I had to take the drive motor off still, and the carrier behind it. But I got both of these axles pressed out already. I've got the chains and the sprockets all off the axles on both sides. I was only going to do one at a time, but since I didn't have the blue Loctite to put those six bolts back in, I decided to start on this side and get this one apart. I did get this one back together and cleaned up yesterday. I just used a chisel to knock the bearing back down from the inside race. Knock it back down. And then I put the snap ring when it was close and I knocked it down until I got the snap ring to pop into place. So it's locked all the way around. I've also found out that if you've never done this before, this carrier factory comes with one seal in it. This failure isn't very common, but when you do go to change it, you need to order two of the seals. And uh it being my first video, I'm going to try to post what part numbers that I used for all this stuff in the comments. Whatever they call it now. Um, I'm not putting this one together again because I don't have the Loctite for the big bolts yet. But uh, I got this one put back together, so I'm going to get the one in that side out. Do the same thing with my press that I did before. And back together, she'll go with new seals. Hopefully get it done by this weekend. Peace. Little side note here. When you pull the drive motor off of the carrier, sometimes the hydraulic motor part comes out and sticks to the carrier on the shaft. If it does, take it out. The side of all the circles goes to the side of all the circles. <laughs> like so you put that back on the carrier first and then you put the motor on and tighten up your bolts hey y'all I was cleaning up the parts where I got the hydraulic drive part clean best I can anyway got the shaft cleaned off using my parts cleaner and then brake cleaner afterwards as I got to the carrier lo and behold there's our bad seal. The whole reason for this job. Well, let's get her pounded out. Get this part cleaned up. Get this thing back together. I'm really hoping to have this thing done by this Sunday. We'll see what happens. I got all the chains and the gears and everything out of it. I'm going to clean that up. Which side they go to side over here I clean all this stuff up I already cleaned up most of the silicone up on top of here and I cleaned the inside of it out and got all the old oil and cleaned out the inside the 
best I could anyway. But both carriers are off. And uh, in the process, we'll get put back on here pretty soon. I'm going to bring a wire wheel home from work tomorrow. I just moved to this place, so you can see the string. That's where my new shop's going to go. But so far right now, my air compressor's sitting in the back with no power, and I got no power to the shed, so I've run an extension cord all the way over to that little building. But... You know me, if you know me, I will, uh, I will get her done. And soon. Hopefully. Okay, y'all. Uh, I've got this thing almost back together. I didn't do a lot of this on film because that was just a god-awful disaster trying to put that back together. Uh, if you're going to do this, besides the inch and a half wrench, you need to do that. And the other side, you need the big torque wrench to get them things loose. You need a real set of snap ring pliers to do that. I ended up having to pry them back on. It was a nightmare. And if you're going to do this, grab yourself a bottle of leave because your back's going to hurt. And some prayer beads because you're going to need everything you can get to get these chains on the back side. One side's easy. Once you do the other side, you don't have half the room to move and just bang on stuff. The way I got these sprockets back on is just manhandle it back up on the axle. And then take this washer out and get this bolt. Hush! Get this bolt out. Take the washer out. Put the bolt back in and just use a pry bar against the edge of the bolt and the side of the sprocket and hit this side the opposite side of your prying on with a hammer you don't have to hit it hard just tap it and it'll work the sprocket on it's a nightmare and uh i promise there's going to be lots of cuss words and uh a lot of stuff you can't film on youtube um Hydraulic motors are back in. Carriers are back in with new seals. Both sides. Got the covers back on. Got the tires back on. Both sides. If there's any questions anybody has, I'll be more than happy to answer questions in the comments section. But all the hydraulics in the back are hooked up. Got to get new carriage bolts for the foot pedals because they always rot and break off when you go to take them off but i left the couple covers off for tonight so i can see if there's hydraulic fluid leaking through just to be positive that nothing's going on after i get all this work done and put it all the way back together and find out that uh, something's still leaking together. yeah and this is my son Riker, the five-year-old mechanic he knows more car parts than most of the people watching this video. <laughs> he helps me out with little things that he can do. Rather than driving me nuts, he's helped me quite a bit on this project. So, but uh, well, I'll get I'll get some more wrapped too. up and uh, this tire's off the we'll, too. I'll get back with you and show you how to put all the hand controls yeah, and foot pedals back together. Too. But uh, this tire's all off right, y'all. See you later. Hey y'all, I'm back. Steps to putting this stuff back together here. You got this control for all your foot pedals and your levers. Put that in there first. Just push it back out of your way. And get this foot panel in here. Get your two bottom bolts started. Your control levers are going to go right one here. One here. And then when I get to the foot pedals, they can... They can get controlled back there by that, and then uh, oh, the piece of trash can be sitting on it's gonna goes back and forth on this side over here. But uh, I will uh, get with you when I get a little bit further.
Well, you know, I got it done. Just a little uh, overview of where everything goes. Your right pedal is going to hook to this one here. Your left pedal is hooked to the bottom one through this clevis, across this, into this thing, crossbar, and then that one goes to your left pedal up there. I replaced all the bolts that go to here and that one there. I replaced them because they were wore out pretty bad. So it was giving a lot of slop to the pedals. One little trick, if you paint where the bolts were, and I know there's another circle there, but that's not where I took it out of, so I put it back to where it was. Both sides, tight. And the same thing here, where they went. Those are for your levers. To go to the back of your hydrostat unit. And that's what makes it go back and forth. Both of them are working. You got your dampener right there. But that's all hooked up underneath here. Like so. And if you want to adjust it, you take those four bolts loose. But if you do adjust it, you got to make sure it fits through these slots in the cab. But I got her done. She's running and moving and no leaking. So I guess I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace. Hey, uh, little bonus footage. Something I'm doing at work. Putting new fenders in the trailer. Idiots don't know how to back up. Here's the old ones. I gotta do the other side still. Peace.